everyone. My name is Isabel Galliera, and I'm an art historian. Um, so I teach and I research about socially engaged art practice. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you, Simon, for the kind invitation. So I'll get right to it. Um, I know we are very um, strict on time. So socially engaged art practice and the institutions that support it have always been relevant. And especially now in the era of the Anthropocene, planetary environmental devastation, starvation, humiliation, and inequity. A vivid image of the crisis of our time is the caravan currently en route from Honduras to the US border, which I'm sure that many of you have heard about in the news. It began on October 13 and is currently around, has currently around 5,000 people, though it is really difficult to know the exact number, and includes women, children traveling both by foot and also hitchhiking rides on trucks. Depending on where you are getting your news, people in the caravan are seen as fleeing poverty, gang violence, and persecution. But on the other side, the caravan is also seen as an invasion, as President Trump called it. According to a Washington Post article, Trump also announced that the US would send around 5,000 troops to the border with Mexico to deal with the migrants, whose arrival is rather difficult to estimate. That caravan is outside the US, but there is currently one in the US, um, which is recently completing the 12 week tour around the US and it's a caravan of the TPS Initiative for Justice that started in August. This caravan consisted, consists over 50 TPS holders from countries such as El Salvador, Honduras, Haiti, Nicaragua, Sudan, Nepal, Somalia. And it is at an attempt to save the temporary protected status program that protects over 450,000 people from deportation. Trump announced to terminate this program next year as part of his ongoing attacks against immigrant communities. So while I was following these caravans in the news, I was reminded of the work by Romanian artist Matej Bejenaro, Hungarian artist Miklos Orhard, Scottish artist Dominic Hislop, and Spanish artist Santiago Sierra. I was reminded of all the pertinent social and political issues that have been and are at the core of socially engaged art practice. The global penchant toward art as social practice has encompassed modes of art making theorized and discussed internationally since the early 90s as participatory, relational, collaborative, dialogic, community-based, social political conscious forms of public art. Key writers include Suzanne Lacey, Grant Castor, Claire Bishop, Tom Finkelperl, Nicolas Bourriot, Mion Cohn, Shannon Jackson, Nato Thompson, and many others. Certainly, such practice that conceives art as catalyst for change is not new. It has roots in early forms of avant-garde art, such as constructivism and the Bauhaus, with their goal of, marginal, of merging art and life. For example, in Russia, especially during the peak years between 1917 and the early 1920s, avant-garde artists were invited and supported by the newly installed Bolshevik political regime to take part in the transformation of a predominantly agrarian society into an industrialized socialist economy led by the proletariat. In the US, socially engaged art is rooted in conceptualist work by artists such as Alan Caprow, in the 1970s feminist initiatives that made use of performance and pedagogy as we see in the Holman House led by Miriam Shapiro and Judy Chicago in 1971. And then in the 1970s and 80s with the emergence of new genre public art in the work of Suzanne Lacey. And then the work of Group Material and Martha Rossler at the D-Art Foundation which follow suit. Socially engaged art is also indebted to the confrontational approach practiced by institutional critique artists such as Andrea Frazier, Hans Hacke, and Fred Wilson, to name just a few. So in my research and teaching, I use the notion of socially engaged art as an umbrella term to include self-organizing institutions, site-specific contemporary forms of art and exhibition making, that unfold in public spaces, primarily urban, but also rural, over longer or shorter periods of time. 
Some art forms are participatory, meaning they can, no, they can ultimately be realized only through the physical involvement, albeit temporary, of people. Other projects are collaborative, meaning that they emerge from specific ways of working together among diverse individuals. Others combine both participatory and collaborative strategies. The participants and or collaborators in these artistic practices vary from fellow artists, curators and critics to audience members, anonymous passerby in public squares and members of specific marginalized communities, such as immigrants. Some projects aim to create harmonious collaborations. Others aim to be antagonistic and confrontational. Nevertheless, these projects are the result of complex negotiation dynamics unfolding among artists, curators, and funding institutions. Despite their varied modes of critique and strategies of engagement, they all share a desire to reclaim public life from current neoliberal ideologies in order to build inclusive public spheres as democratic forms within emerging or declining civil societies. Such goals are especially vital under the pervasive influence of global neoliberalism, supported by increasingly autocratic political regimes throughout the world. To quote uh, historian Vitai Preshoff, the monsters have returned. Revived by political leaders worldwide, such as Trump, Erdogan, Orban, Modi, Maduro. Our contemporary conditions, governed by the global neoliberalism emphasis on individual libertarianism, have continued to trigger increasing worldwide gaps between the rich and the poor. Environmental degradation, communal and familiar separations, the wild craze for profit accumulation through deregulation and outsourcing of production to third world countries around the globe in order to exploit low manufacturing costs are all sustained by the precarious conditions of the worker. This implies, for example, short term and or part-time part -time jobs, health and pension insecurity, long commutes and global migrations. Neoliberal forces therefore control and organize life through various technologies of power, which Michael Foucault called biopower. There are at the core of global migrations of people determined to re relocate and escape poverty, gang violence, environmental devastation. So the migrants are the sacrifice for the failure and successes of neoliberalism, understood as both an ideological construction and an economical order. Immigration has always been a controversial and divisive political issue. A number of contemporary socially engaged artists have approached it in various ways. So I decided to highlight a few artists. It was a hard choice um, or, or a difficult decision and their works because of their particular ways in which they closely work with situations and institutions to accomplish their projects and implicitly because of the questions they raise on the role of art institutions in our times of crisis. When a black man is involved in a dirty deed. The belief of the Italians is that every black man is involved in a dirty deed. The police can come into the market and ask for your document or passport, and you can be deported. What year do you think this was in? 2002, in Italy. And this is James, an immigrant from Nigeria to Italy describing in an interview with the artist Miklos Erhardt and Dominic Hislop his experiences with practices of racial profiling that associate race with criminality performed by the Turin police who considered the open market in Porta Palazzo one of the most difficult zones in the city from a security standpoint. Particularly in the Italian context, markers of differential ordering of immigrant groups had been based on a person's national affiliation, physical appearance, or popular stereotypical notions produced and reproduced in the media, or in discussions among Italians. As a result, Bangladeshi immigrants are seen as street vendors. African groups sell handbags. Romanian and Albanian men are viewed as untrustworthy and part of mafia. 
Writing in 2008, Flavia Stanley argued that the differential treatment of immigrant groups by Italian citizens was motivated by a desire to protect their own European status from and against non-EU citizens. Such informal patterns of everyday interactions have been regulated by Italy's institutionalized restrictive national legislation on immigration, most vividly presented then by the 2002 Bosifini Law. Italy's most highly restrictive reform since the fascist period. Such exclusionary measures as those in Italy clearly support the notion of fortress Europe, a term Chris Shore used to indicate the tightening of EU borders against immigrants in the early 2000s. And it was this fortress Europe that Erhard and Hislop wanted to challenge and subvert in their socially engaged work called Reroute. It was created as part of their participation in the Bing Turino International Biennale of Young Artists. It presented the engagement of the artists with 28 recent immigrants in the city of Turin. It developed through a collaborative process that included several meetings and extended over a period of several months, only in part funded by the Biennale organizing institutions. So a bit about the process, the how. First, the artists identified participants by con contacting a number of local organizations. Then, beginning in December of 2001, they met with participants who were invited to trace their own version of the city, a mental map based on their routes and effective responses to specific urban places. The artists gave each participant a blank sheet of white paper with only a dot in the center that symbolized Torino's Porta Nova train station, the main entry point in the city for all immigrants. An interview based on their hand-drawn mental maps immediately followed, and the artists gave each participant a camera in order for them to photograph and illustrate the map with photos of the places. The artists entered in contact with 20 organizations in Turin, serving the needs of the homeless and the immigrants. Once in Turin, the Biennale office connected the artists with a public school where immigrants learned Italian. Following this initial contact, in a rather organic way, the artists continued to establish contacts with local social workers, teachers, political activists, cultural organizations, and support groups for immigrants that were willing to recommend artists to potential participants. Engaging in a self-reflexive production of space, Reroute became a platform for articulating an inclusive form of citizenship based on complex relational processes where temporal and spatial differences were continually neg negotiated between individuals. Through the collection of individual views where each of the self-narrated oral histories became part of the community of singular voices, the artist disrupted the exclusionary and essentialist approach to immigrant populations. Similar to Erhard and Hislop, but employing a different collaborative strategy, Matei Begenaro created work that participated in the social political debate on immigration that unfolded at the EU level in the first decades following the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. His two projects, My Arcs Dubai in 2007 and Travel Guide conceived in 2005, illustrated the effects of what writer Subrata Bobby Barnaghi called the power of necro-capitalism, which describes the ways in which neoliberalism exercises its power of control by not only allowing and determining people's way of living, but also their modes of dying. In his video, My Arcs Dubai, Begenaro narrates the 1996 tragic death of three Romanian immigrants thrown off board of a Taiwanese transportation ship. At one level, the necro, necro capital is localized in the cumulative circumstances encountered in their country that provoked the three young Romanians to attempt to cross the Atlantic over to Canada by embarking illegally on board the ship and hiding in air-sealed shipping containers. At another level, necropolitical emerges in the unhesitant decision of the ship captain to get rid of the bodies out of fear of losing his job upon public revelation, revelation of dead illegal immigrant bodies on his ship. It is the very condition of legality, of living as a marginalized citizen, as an impoverished European post-communist nation, restricted by a complex web of legal requirements to travel or work in other countries, which contributes to an alienation of life and an acceleration of actual death. 
In 2000, Etienne Balibar spoke of a European apartheid that exists simultaneously with the notion of European citizenship. It implies that immigrant population on the EU territory, coming most often from African countries and also Eastern Europe, are constituted as inferior in rights and dignity, subject to violent forms of security control and forced to live on the border, neither absolutely inside nor totally outside. Begenaru's travel guide was conceived in 2005 before Romania joined the EU, when its citizens were not able to travel to UK without visa. And because of that sound, I'm going to skip over the Spanish artist, and I'm going to um, relay my conclusion. So even from these projects, socially engaged artists seek to endanger dialogue on pertinent social and political issues, and to try to foster resilient communities. They focus on difference, division, inequality in society. They raise questions on the relation between ethics and aesthetics, on the role of art, the art institution, and art organization in our time. They are process, site, and time-based, and often by the very process of interaction and negotiation with particular community, this is what becomes the art medium. And by its very nature, such art forms are hybrid, cross-disciplinary, and in their aims, they aim to bring forward the uncomfortable and neglected issues of our society.